we'd like to say that uh, we're happy to be aboard Columbia on this very successful mission. This flight has shown us that every once in a while life throws you a little bit of a curve, and uh, we would like to think that it's not the curve that counts, but how we react to it. I think uh, we're going to take advantage of, of uh, having this mechanical failure on board to teach us more about hatches and make us better prepared for future flights. And on the other side, on the other hand, we're having an extremely successful science flight. Orpheus Paz and the Wake Shield satellites both have performed flawlessly. Uh, the space vision system experiment has performed flawlessly, and we've gotten a, a lot of mid-deck science experiments and work done that will be very beneficial to the space program and to the U.S. and to the world population. So we're very happy about the way things have gone, and we're going to react to and work with uh, what we've seen happen already in a very positive way. And we're ready for your questions now. This is Marcia Dunn of the Associated Press for Dr. Jones or Dr. Jernigan. I realize it's a remote possibility, but how much thought have you given to what would you need to do to open that hatch in case an emergency spacewalk is needed? What would it take to get it open, and how nervous would you be forcing it open and knowing it might not sell properly on your way back in? Well, if we got into an emergency situation, then, uh, then the risk-reward trade-off's a little different, and so we would work um, hard to get that hatch open, and uh, even if we do have a mechanism that uh, would stick, we could remove the rigging from the exterior of the door if we had to and use the delta P uh, across the hatch in order to hold it on once we repressurize the airlock. So if we got into that very remote possibility, um, then we would work very hard to get that hatch open and uh, very hard to get it sealed back. This is Phil Chen, Earth News, uh, Phil Chen, Earth News for TACO. Um, realized you didn't want to fire the thrusters when the wake shield was deployed uh, to prevent contaminating it, but how much closer would you have let it come to the shuttle and feel comfortable before you would have finally cried uncle and hit the thrusters to get out of the way? Well, Phil, we had uh, about 10 feet of clearance across the uh, roof of the crew cabin, and the closure rate was extremely slow, so we could have taken it right down to uh, probably a foot or several inches. So we had quite a quite a bit of uh, clearance, and I think we might could have even gotten away with firing a, a forward-firing thruster that wouldn't have con contaminated it too much. So perhaps the uh, science mission wasn't at as much risk as uh, as we as it could have been. Uh, but we had. We had margin. We had plenty of margin. Uh, and again, I'd like to emphasize that we were excited over the fact that we might have to fire the thrusters, not over the fact that the uh, wake shield was about to hit us, which it was not. Closure rate was so slow that everything was uh, a very slow drama unfolding. And the whole drama point was that we didn't want to fire the thrusters. This is Irene Brown with UPI for a story in Musgrave. Um, it must have gone through your mind um, with the hatch jam if that had happened on your last flight. And I was just wondering what your um, personal thoughts on lessons learned from this is. Well, we've learned that uh, no matter how many stones you turn over to try to head off surprises, that in this kind of business of exploration and discovery, uh, there is risk and things do happen. If uh, if we'd not been able to get out the door on my last flight double repair mission, uh, we'd have probably had to come back and uh, fix the hatch, fix any generic problem in all the hatches, and gone and done it again, Irene. Uh, for anybody in the crew who wants to take it, uh, how well have you adjusted circadian shifting on this mission? Uh, any problems with uh, not falling asleep when you're supposed to fall asleep, uh, waking up too early? Um, would you prefer to just uh, slam shift a couple of nights before uh, landing, or are you adjusting to the cycles? Yeah, Phil, the, uh, the shifting that we're doing is all to the right, which means we stay up later in the day and then sleep in an extra hour and get up later. And human nature being that it is, that is the easiest way to shift. And uh, originally we were planning to shift eight hours, and we packed a couple more onto that because we are shifting so well. And it's easy to stay up late, especially here in, in space with the tremendous views. And then once you go to sleep, we all have been sleeping very, very well, and we don't have any problems sleeping the eight or nine hours that they're giving us. And so the shift has really been, 
in essence a non-event and uh, in, invisible to us on our workday. Uh, Bill Harley with CBS again for Dr. Musgrave. Uh, story out of this is an out of the blue question because I don't know if anybody's passed this up, but there's been a discovery today announced that uh, that there is evidence of ice on the moon in the south polar caps, which is pretty interesting stuff. And I know you've given a lot of thought to exploration in general since we're talking about Mars tonight. But what does that say to you that if there was in fact ice on the moon, what sort of an advantage that may mean or a leg up anyway down the road to colonizing or having long-term bases there? Tom and Tammy probably know more about uh, the natural resources that we need to find out there than I do. They've probably done more thinking about that. But uh, clearly, if there is ice and there is water out there, that is a natural resource which is extraordinarily important to establishing you know, a permanent thing such as an observatory on the moon or some kind of colony. We need to eventually... Uh, find the natural resources, be a mining community out there, extract the oxygen, the manufacturing, and the materials we need out there as opposed to carrying them out there. I think it's an extraordinarily uh, important finding, and uh, Mission Control did that, did send it up to us early this morning, Bill. This is uh, Stephen Young with uh, Reuters to finish up here on a, a light-hearted note for story. Um, I'm wondering, Story, if you would feel an immense sense of irony if on your last mission you finally made contact with extraterrestrials and they came along to pick you up, but you couldn't get outside because the hatch is stuck. Yeah, if they were so advanced to get here, they would open the hatch for us. Columbia Houston uh, for Rommel, uh, thank you for cycling. Uh, we are now uh, convinced that there is no binding in that area, and uh, the, those uh, pictures you've provided us uh, confirm that. Houston, Columbia, the first guide we've picked to look at uh, picture is available. What do you think of it? And that's a great picture, Taco. We couldn't see that on the first uh, survey before, and so that's a, a good uh, data point. And if we could move around to the other ones, but uh, you've uh, you've angled the uh, end effector camera perfectly for that one. Hey, Houston, this is the uh, lower starboard guide, and we're looking at it upside down. And we copy, Taco, and you're moving the, your, uh, Rommel's moving that arm around like a fine microsurgeon. We really appreciate those views. Okay, well, uh, look at the first thing that comes in the field of view. I think it may be another guide.
And I was wrong. Here's the foot. And we will get the pitcher stable. Would you like some cycles on it? Yes, please. Columbia, Houston, uh, for Taco and Rommel, uh, that completes our survey. Thank you for a really outstanding job. This is an important uh, visual record for uh, when we get back on the ground. And uh, we also now have uh, an accurate record of, of the situation on orbit. So we've completed the survey, and uh, you're free to uh, cradle the arm. Probably not. Go ahead. Good day, America. I'm Captain Ken Cockrell, and I'm Commander Kent Rominger aboard the United States Space Shuttle Columbia, orbiting 195 nautical miles above the Earth. We have the following message to pass. Go Navy! Pete Army! Columbia, Houston, in your dreams. 